Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today for our Sunday service. If you're new here, welcome! We are so happy you're here and we would love to know who you are and answer any questions that you may have. The easiest way to get connected is to simply click the Get Connected link that is available on your platform. Also, before we jump into today's service, we wanted to take a couple minutes to let you know what you can expect each week here at Monterey Church. You see, we believe that the church isn't a building. It's not just a service that we attend once a week, but that the church is whenever and wherever his people are gathered together around the presence of God. That's why there are multiple opportunities for us to come together and to stay focused on God all week long. First, our Sunday service is the time where we all start our week together in order to focus on God and worship Him with songs through our generosity and the study of His Word. Don't worry if you aren't able to make it at 9 a.m. because the service is available on demand all week long. Additionally, we have different Sunday experiences for your kids depending on their ages, including your toddler through pre-K, elementary kids, middle schoolers, and even a midweek gathering for our high school students. In addition to the Sunday gathering, every Monday at noon, we come together over Zoom for a quick devotional and to spend some time together in prayer. This little lunchtime break is a great way to ensure that our hearts are aligned and ready to tackle the work week. Raise your hand if you love Worship Wednesdays. I know I do. So each Wednesday at 7 p.m., we are going to be worshiping the Lord together in some form on any of our online platforms. Now, this is gonna look different every week, some weeks it might be a full band leading us in worship. Sometimes it might be prayer and communion. Maybe it's a devotional and a brand new song. Whatever it looks like, you can expect that Worship Wednesdays will be a powerful touch point where you get to worship the Lord in the middle of your week. So we'll see you Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for Worship Wednesday. In addition to Sundays, Mondays, and Wednesdays, there are small groups that we call D groups or discipleship groups, which meet throughout the week. Our D groups are really the lifeblood of this family because they're where we get to know one another, it's where we discuss and apply the sermon, and it's really where we live life and have fun together. Some of our groups are currently meeting online through Zoom or Google Meets, and some are meeting in person, socially distanced. All of the information about our D groups and weekly gatherings, including the links to join these gatherings, can be found on our homepage at www.monterreychurchca.com. Additionally, another great way to stay focused on God and connected to one another is to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, and to subscribe to our weekly newsletter by clicking the Get Connected link. All right, service is about to begin. Now, we know things look different than we may have all hoped or expected, but we are grateful for this season as a time to really grow in our relationship to God and one another. So, before we jump into the service today, we really wanted to give you a minute to prepare. This is the time to maybe grab your Bible or your notebook. For some of you, your coffee or your tea. Uh, it may even be a good time to kind of look around your environment and get your family members together. Maybe even put those phones on mute. Um, in other words, this is a time, let's be intentional to really prepare not only our environments, but our hearts so that we can give God our best today. And also remember, although we're gathering remotely, and um, viewing a service online. This isn't entertainment or a program that we're just passively watching, but it's a time where we're entering into the presence of a holy and living God. So let's really lean into what Jesus wants to say to each of us individually, and let's treat this time as a sacred moment.
Hello, hello, Monterey Church. So glad you guys have joined us today. My name is Jedi. I'm the worship pastor here, and I'm just so excited for worship. I'm so excited for this new year and all that God has in store for us and this church. And so we're going to jump into worship today. I want to invite you to pray with me, and uh, we'll just jump in and worship the Lord together. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. We thank you for this time that you've set apart where we can come and worship you, Lord, and fix our eyes on you. And that's what we're here to do today. We're here to worship you, God, to give you all of our attention. And uh, we invite you now, God, into our spaces of worship, wherever we're at. And um, I pray that this time of worship would really connect us to your heart today, God. We want to be close to you. We want to learn from you. And so we invite you now into this place. We love you so much. We pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said with me, amen, amen. Church, this first song we're going to sing is called Champion. And uh, it's a song about identity, about declaring who we are in Christ, and um, just repeating that over ourselves of what God says over us. So let's sing it together. so hard to see it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what we don't deserve it you take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. And I I'm seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Now I can finally see it, teaching me how to receive it, so let all the strife This is my victory, you are my champion, giants for when you stand undefeated, every battle you won, and I am who you say I am, you crown me with confidence, I'm seated. In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who's conquered it all Oh, you conquered it all All for me, God Because you love me Because you love me Come on, let's declare this today when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority that Jesus has given me. And when I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority that Jesus has given me. Come on, declare it. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority that Jesus has given me.
doubts you have today, let's bring it before the Lord. Just lay it down at his feet. Father, we come into your presence. We love you. We believe that you are powerful. We believe that you are mighty, that you are good. We block out anything that would tell us otherwise. Help us to focus on your voice alone today. Come on, church. Let's declare this bridge together. When I lift my voice and shout every wall comes crashing down i have the authority come on jesus has given me and when i open up my mouth miracles start breaking out i have the authority Every battle you've won, I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence, I'm seated in the heavenly place, undefeated. By the power of your name, I'm seated in the heavenly place, undefeated. With the one who's conquered it all. Amen, amen. Father, that's our prayer today, that we would just rest on your truth in our lives, God. We don't listen to anything that the world tells us, what our social circle tells us, what our jobs tell us, God. We rest on your truth in your truth alone. So help us to believe in that today and help us to believe, God, that whatever we're facing today, that we can face it because you are here with us, that every battle belongs to you, God, that you are the conqueror, you are the overcomer, and we put all of our trust and our hope in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's worship God together. Hey! When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the 
is the mountain You see the mountain move And as I walk through the shadow Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now For I am safe Come on, declare this today. So when I fight, I fight on my knees With my head lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you Every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you For me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. Here we go. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. For us, nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty oh, fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God, and you shine in the shadow, you win every battle, come on, nothing, hey. oh mighty fortress, you go before us, nothing can stand against the power of our God, you shine in Stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my head lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, and I sing through the night. That'll be long to you. Man, amen. God is so good. Church, thank you so much for worshiping with us. Um, we wanted to share a very special testimony with you today from our good friend, Amy. So check this out. In this season of constant change, God has given me the opportunity to renew my mind and transform it by his word. And Romans 12, one through two states that therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. 
Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's pretty much what God's been doing in my life is just changing and renewing my mind and giving me an open mind to what he has to prune in my life and giving me attitudes of faithfulness and forgiveness towards family members and friends. And um, I'm just so thankful that God has given us this opportunity. Well, thank you, Amy, for sharing just some of your story with us. We love you. We miss you. I can't wait to worship with you uh, sometime very soon again. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm so thankful that you're here with us. We're going to continue in worship through the giving of our financial uh, offerings, our tithes, or praying and preparing for those. And you can give in a couple different ways. Uh, one is simply by just texting the amount to the number that's on your screen or you can give by uh, afterwards going to the website and uh, simply you know, clicking on the give link and then finding all the directions um, from there. I think one of the reasons, I think as we look into 2021 and we consider just our direction and our focus and our vision for this year, one of the many reasons as to why we give, why we do believe it's a part of our worship is because Jesus tells us that where our treasure is, there our heart is also that as we invest in and through the kingdom of God we're telling our heart and we're telling our mind and we're telling our emotions we're telling everything to just focus in on his will on his kingdom because it's through his kingdom that we encounter uh, just the blessing of God in many ways and so um, we're going to like we did last week you know we're doing something new now where in a second we're going to stand together and read this offering liturgy to prepare our hearts to give and you may be asking yourself well what's a liturgy a liturgy is you know traditionally throughout church history it's simply a word used to describe an ordered or an arranged part of uh, a corporate worship gathering of God's people together and so um, you know, from this point moving forward, we're going to be reading this liturgy out loud again to just remind ourselves of the importance of our giving, to pray over our giving, uh, and to prepare to give. So, how about let's stand to our feet wherever you are. We're going to stand to our feet and let us read this offering liturgy together. Our offering is an act of worship and honor. It is a way to express our gratitude, faith, and love for God and His people. We recognize that it is a blessing and a privilege to give, and that God is the source of all that we have. We also practice generosity to focus our hearts on God's will and His purposes. We don't offer this kingdom investment reluctantly or under compulsion but prayerfully and cheerfully. And we hold on to this truth, that as we test God in our tithe, He will open up the floodgates of heaven's blessing. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to focus on your kingdom, on your will, to invest our treasure in you. We know, Lord, that this is our opportunity to uh, open up the floodgates of heaven and to encounter and experience your blessing. And so we pray that you would multiply this tithe, that you would see our faith, and that you would um, ultimately provide, that you would sustain and that you would continue to move us forward in gospel-centered ministry. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done and all that you're doing here in Monterey and on this earth. We love you, Lord. We also pray over this word. We thank you that it is alive, that it's active, that these aren't just words on a page for us to uh, examine, but that, Lord, these are words that uh, speak directly into our life, directly into our circumstance. And so we thank you for these instructions. We thank you for your Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us through it. 
and we just love you so much, Jesus. It's in your name we pray, and everybody said with me this morning, amen, amen, amen. Well, listen, uh, again, welcome. My name is Mike. I am the teaching pastor here at Monterey Church. Um, I want to say before we jump in any further that we are a Jesus community. You may have noticed it by now. We, we love Jesus. We believe that Jesus is the Savior, is the hope of the world, that He's the way, the truth, and the life. And that's why we worship Him. That's why we sing to Him. That's why we honor Him. That's why we follow Him. Uh, it's why we just love Him so much. And so um, I want you also to know, though, that you don't have to believe that to belong here. I'm just glad that you're here. And my prayer uh, is that all of us would just make ourselves at home, that you would feel welcome here, and that we would just continue on this journey uh, um, of learning, of uh, discovering the adventure of following Jesus recklessly, authentically, and together. Um, And so I also want to welcome you back to the second week in our year-long series that uh, we're calling The Living Story, Our Journey Through God's Word in 2021, where we are reading the Bible together individually, daily reading the Bible in a year. That's our commitment. And alongside that commitment, we are preaching um, in tandem with the scriptures that we're reading. And listen, I know if, if you've been reading this book, like I've been reading this book every day, you know, it's not easy. Uh, I want I want to recognize that, that, you know, it does take discipline um, and it takes intentionality, but it is totally worth it. It's absolutely worth reading this story because we know that this story uh, is truth, that this story is alive, and that this story is focused on all around the center the central character is our savior uh jesus and so we're diving in we're going deep we're doubling down and we're getting into this story every week so this week if you've been reading along um we've been in uh let's see genesis chapter 10 through 26 so 16 chapters this week, and I do, I am curious to see how you guys are doing. Let me know in the chat. Let me encourage you to, if you missed a day or two, don't worry about it. Uh, just start right where you are, like, or start where, you know, start fresh tomorrow um, with the church on, uh, what would it be, January 11th. So start right there. Um, if, you know, if you're looking for a community, Um, I know that a lot of us are just really enjoying reading the Word together and then talking about it in our D groups. I do uh, recommend that you join a D group. If you're not involved in a D group, this is the time to get in, to really wrestle through Scripture together. We're talking about reading the Bible together, what God is speaking to us through it. Uh, Also, there's a Facebook group uh, that you can join where people are posting every day, this is what I learned, these are the questions I have. It's all on there. You can actually find all this information on our website, um, uh, on the homepage, there's all these links that you can find to everything that you need to jump into this living story and to get involved in God's community. Now today, what I'd like to do is we're going to start in Genesis chapter 12, and we're going to meet a man. His name is Abram, and Abram was given this um command by God, this life-changing command by God, and attached to that command were eight, uh, frankly, unbelievable promises that God gave to Abram. So it says this in in Genesis chapter 12, starting at verse 1, and we're going to read through these promises. It says, the Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. And here's where he starts his promises. I will make you into a great nation. I'll make you into a great, uh, into a great people. I will bless you and make you famous. You will, and you will um, be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth, imagine that. All the families on earth will be blessed 
through you, Abram. Then you skip down to verse 7. It says, Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, and this is one last promise, I will give this land, this land of Canaan, to your descendants. I, you know, this land, it's going to be the land of your kids and their kids and their kids and generations to come. So you can imagine just how exciting this would have been uh, for Abraham, Abram because this was a promise. It was a covenant that through Abram, uh, the nations and generations to come would encounter and experience this supernatural blessing from heaven on earth. No one had ever experienced a promise like this. So Abram, in faith, because he trusted God, he uh, uh, he left his native land, he took everything that he had, and he headed to the foreign land of Canaan. Now, we fast forward the script about 25 years, and you can read through Genesis 12 through 15, and what we see is that Abram, though it wasn't easy, Abram and his wife Sarah, they experienced some of uh, the result of this promise and of this blessing in, in different ways. They received a supernatural direction from God. They received uh, wealth and success in many ways. They uh, received protection and power and provision, but there was one problem. And, and you see this within uh, the text. And they wrestled through this in different ways. The one problem was that they were both old. Abram at this point was 100 years old. Sarah was 90 years old. And Sarah was also barren. Uh, she, she physically could not have children. And that was a problem, especially given the fact that, you know, this promise that God had left Abram was a generational promise. And so you see Abram actually uh, take this to God. Um, and he says to God, like, look, you know, what good is this promise of blessing that you've given me to the next generation if there is no next generation? Now, God responds to Abram in different ways. He, he's merciful and he responds by reminding Abram. And we see this through the scripture where he says, look, you know, Sarah is going to give birth to your son. Don't worry, Sarah's going to give birth to your son. And then he takes Abram outside and he says, look, in fact, look up at the stars. Look at all these stars in the sky. Like, the, take a number of these stars. That's how many descendants you're going to have. I'm going to be your God, and I'm going to be the God of your descendants. He even changed Abram's name to Abraham. Uh, and Abraham, his name, uh, the meaning behind Abraham is the father of many or the father of many people, the father of many nations. And so, in other words, God is saying, look, you can trust me here, Abraham. Like, I will ultimately provide for you. You can trust me. There is an heir that is coming, uh, that is coming, uh, that will continue my promise through the generations to come. And then... At the, you know, at the right moment, right when God said he would do it, Sarah did in fact become pregnant and she gave birth to a son named Isaac. And so you can imagine because Sarah was barren, because they were waiting for so long, because they grew so impatient, you can imagine just this sense of relief. You can imagine their joy. You can imagine their excitement. You can imagine how much they valued and how much uh, they loved their little boy, Isaac. Isaac was this miracle child. He was the sign of God's power and provision. He was the channel of God's blessing to the nations. And so we pick up the story in Genesis chapter 22. And it says this in Genesis chapter 22. I, I want to start reading here because there's a plot twist in the story uh, that is just, it's kind of, it comes out of nowhere. And it certainly throws, you know, if you're reading it, it kind of throws everybody off guard here. Like, what's going on? It says in Genesis 22, starting in verse 1, Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. So everything seemed to be going well. Uh, Isaac was growing up. Um, Sarah was doing well. They were encountering these blessings. But then sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham 
God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much. Take your son, your only son, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Now, wait a second. Did, like, did I hear that right? Did I, am I reading that right? Sure enough, this is what God says. He says, take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, go to the land of Moriah, go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Now, okay, let's just pause and put ourselves in the shoes of Abraham and Sarah here. God has literally just asked them to do the unthinkable, the unimaginable, to sacrifice their son who they love and who they value and who they cherish so much on an altar. You, you, you can imagine their thoughts and their feelings. The Bible doesn't really make it clear, but as, you know, as a parent, you can imagine just their shock in their sense of just horror, uh, conflict. Think about their conversation that night. Like he, the Lord told you to do what, Abraham? Like, are you, did you hear from him right? We, we can't do that. We can't sacrifice our son. Uh, he wants us to do what? He's our son. Like, like, we're supposed to be his parents. We're supposed to be his protectors. We're not supposed to be his executioners in any way. This doesn't make any sort of sense whatsoever. Why would, why would God, why would God promise us this son, eventually give us this son, only to take him away? Isaac is, is um, you know, he's the channel. He's the one uh, for us and for the generations to come to encounter and experience this blessing. You, this makes, abs it's, it goes beyond common sense here. You, you can imagine just their pain and their anguish and their discord in their soul, you know, like wrestling through. Did God really just say that? Now, listen, I know that like for us, we're never going to be able to relate um, to Abraham and Sarah here in the exact same way. But I do think, and hear me, I do think that all of us, we do wrestle with God or we have somewhat of the same thematic questions to God. Because ultimately, like Abraham was being tested, sometimes, you know, God throws us a test. And it's in those moments where we're really tested in our faith that like, that they shock us, it scares us, it shakes us a little bit, that we have these questions like, you want me to do what now? Like, you want me to like give my money? Like, to, you want me to start tithing? Like, seriously, to start tithing 10% into your church? You want me to uh, you want me to forgive that person who has hurt me over and over and over and over again? You want me to let go of that grudge and forgive them? You want me to switch careers? You want me to resist? Like you know, everybody's going in this direction. You want me to resist the pattern of the world, the ways of the world? You want me to uh, to break off that relationship or to like really be intentional to love and to serve my neighbor or to join a D group or heaven forget, forbid, like you want me to lead a D group? Do you know, um, I, there's no way I'm doing that. Oh no, God. Like th this makes no sense what you're calling me to do right now. It just seems too dangerous. It just seems too uncomfortable. It, um... You know, these are the things that just are too valuable to me to let go, or they're just too precious. This goes against common sense. This goes against all my affections, all my ambitions, all 
uh, of my plans and my goals and my hopes and my dreams. So we see this story from Abraham uh, and we experience uh, the same sort of testing of our faith. And, and you know, really, uh, I think our main question, my assumption is Abraham, you know, wrestled with it in his mind. But, you know, I think a lot of our time, a lot of the times the question is, okay, well, why? <laughs> why, God? Why would you do that? What kind of God like what kind of God drags us under the mud like that? What why would you why would you put Abraham in that circumstance? Why would you put me in this uncomfortable place? Why would you require something that just doesn't make any sort of sense that is just irrational and terrifying and uncomfortable? I think it's in those moments that most of us, from time to time, we ignore God. We pretend like it didn't happen. We hope that God, uh, you know, changes his mind. Or we argue, like we push back. Or we aren't obedient and we just simply, we take our time. We do it our own way. There's all these different ways to respond. But I want you to see how Abraham responds here. And I'm just going to start reading through this story. Um, And so buckle your seatbelts for a second. It says this in verse 3. But the next morning, after Abraham had received that message, uh, it says the next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him. Him about. So I want you to notice, before we go any further, notice that there was no protest from Abraham here. There was no questioning. There, no, there was no disregard. He immediately prepared everything that he needed to do. He gathered the wood. He gathered the supplies. He gathered the sacrifice in his son Isaac, and he headed towards Moriah. It says in verse 4, on the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship together, and then we will come right back. Now, I want you to underline that. That's that's an interesting uh, statement from Abraham, and we're going to get back to that, that we will worship together there, and we will come right back. So Abraham placed the placed the wood from the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, and can you just imagine, just imagine that moment right there. Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son, Isaac, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. He tied his son, Isaac, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Now, here's a question. At this point, Isaac obviously knew what was going on. Uh, And it seems as though he could have fought back, but he didn't. Like he was strong enough to carry all this wood for his own sacrifice up this mountain. Uh, I imagine that he was strong enough to at least put up some sort of fight to defend himself in some way against Abraham who was tying him up to sacrificing them, sacrifice him on the altar there, but he didn't. He chose not to fight back. It's, it's a question that I think carries a bit of mystery, but I think there is, uh, you know, the reality that we see here is that there is some trust that Isaac mysteriously and faithfully, you know, he trusted Abraham uh, in a way that, you know, We may never know, but there was some trust there between a son and his father. It says in verse 10, And Abraham picked up the knife 
to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. You can imagine just the, just how terrible and how crazy that moment will be. Yes, Lord, I'm here. Here I am. You see what I'm doing? Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yireh, or Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. Now I want you to underline or circle that word provide there. That word provide in the Hebrew, it's more than just... Um, uh, it's more than just a word that means like God gives us things. It's a word that's intimate. It's a word that's much more personal. Uh, Abraham is saying here, look, the Lord will provide. The Lord sees to it. Uh, the Lord looks and he examines and he is knowledgeable and he experiences all of my needs and he meets those needs. The Lord is my provider. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Then, verse 15, the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says. Because you have obeyed me and have not withheld your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number. Like the stars in the sky, as I promised you, and the sand on the seashore, your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies, and through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me. Then they returned to the servants and traveled back to Beersheba, where Abraham continued to live. Now, listen, I, I don't think... I'm alone in this. Without a doubt, this is one of the uh, heaviest, uh, most startling, shocking passages in all of Scripture. And um, I don't know, I feel like there's so many questions. I think one, though, you may be asking yourself, okay, you know, here's the Scripture, but how is it living? Like, how does this relate to me today? How does this relate to me in, you know, in, in my plans, in our direction, in our vision, in our purpose for 2021? What does that look like? So for the rest of our time today, what I'd like to do is just focus on two truths. I'm going to make this quick. Two truths uh, to apply to our life that we see through the Scripture. One is that God is our ultimate provider. And two, that faith in God, as we see through Abraham, faith in God is confidence and surrender. So God is our ultimate provider, and that faith in God is confidence and surrender. I think the first thing we need to see, though, and if you haven't caught on to this yet, is that there's a lot of foreshadowing. There's connection. There's a foreshadowing between this story of Isaac and Jesus. You know, remember, we've been talking about this over the last couple weeks, that every piece of scripture, it points to Jesus. Jesus is uh, the central character in this living story. And we see that. It's so evident here that, you know, you think about Isaac and you think about Jesus. Both of them were beloved sons. Both of them uh, were long awaited. Both of them were born in uh, miraculous circumstances. Both of them carried their own wood for their own sacrifice. Uh, both of them were obedient to their father in the midst of a sacrifice, and both of them, check this out, both of them were God's way of demonstrating His own provision. Both of them were God's way of demonstrating His own provision, upholding His own promise, and establishing His own righteousness. For Abraham, uh, this was provision in the form of a sacrificial lamb in place of a son. For us, 
its provision in the form of a sacrificial lamb in place of a sinner. Therefore, like Abraham, you, you and I, we too can recognize that God is our ultimate provider. That he is our ultimate provider. That where the wages of sin is death, is separation, is life without God. Life without hope. Life without heaven. Life without peace and fulfillment. Uh, the gift of God, the provision of God, is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That he who knew no sin became sin. So that you and I may become the righteousness of of God, everything that Jesus did, the perfect uh, God man, perfect sinless life all the way to the cross, sacrificing himself on the cross, three days later rising to new life, giving us this opportunity to raise to new life with him again. All of this provided by God and as we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, we know that at all all these things, everything we ever need will be added unto us as well. So listen, it's through Christ Jesus that we encounter God's provision. It's through Christ Jesus that we encounter forgiveness. It's through Christ Jesus that we encounter grace and mercy and blessing and peace and reconciliation and joy both now and forever. And it's so important for us to recognize and to understand that because once we do, once we understand that God is our ultimate provider, then we know how to respond to him when God puts us through these tests of faith. And we see that here with Abraham. Abraham gives us the perfect example. I mean, it's a really good example of how we should respond when God tests our faith. And so the first way we see Abraham respond and how we can apply to our own life, considering how God tests us in many ways. When God tests our faith, we respond in faithful confidence. We respond in faithful confidence. You look back at the scene and what you see from Abraham is, you know, though the command uh, was startling and shocking and though it made no sense, Though this command from God was clear, but the destination wasn't so clear. Like, in other words, though, though he didn't know what the outcome would be with his son Isaac, though there, you know, there was no, you know, he didn't know what it would look like, Abraham never wavered in his faith. Abraham uh, never protested God. In fact, he stood firmly, he stood confidently on the promises of God and the character of God knowing that God was good, knowing that God ultimately had an eternal plan. Uh, the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 20, the Apostle Paul puts it this way. He says, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced the Bible says that Abraham was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Now, what was true for Abraham, I believe, is also true for us. That God tests our faith in ways where we don't, oftentimes we don't know what the outcome is going to be. We can't see the finish line. But, but the reminder for us, as we see in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, is that now faith is confidence. Everybody say confidence with me. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Confidence in what we hope for, assurance about what we do not see. See, in other words, our only job in faith, as we trust Jesus, our only job in faith is to trust and to be confident in who God is, not what we see. I want to say that again because I think we are all looking at these different tests of faith in our life right now. Our only job is to look at who God is and not what we see going on down here. 
not what we see going on around us, even in the situations that are threatening, even in the situations that are uncomfortable. We respond in a faithful confidence to a God who will ultimately provide for us. At the same way, in the same time, when God tests our faith, we respond in faithful surrender. Respond in faithful surrender. So it's confidence and it's surrender. You see the big picture of this narrative and what you see is that, you know, God ultimately, he wasn't interested in this physical sacrifice of Isaac as much as he was interested in the surrender of Abraham's heart. He was making sure that Abraham loved God more than he actually loved his only son, um, Isaac, who was carrying this promise and was willing to surrender him over to God. And I think the same, friends, is true for you and for me, that when God tests our faith, when he requires a sacrifice, it's not always about the outward sacrifice as much as it is about the inward surrender. It's God testing us to see, it's God testing our faith to see if, you know, we truly love him with all of our heart with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. And, I, and listen, hear me. I think the reason why he does this is because surrender, surrender builds our character, friends. Surrender builds character and it ultimately gives God glory. It's why Jesus says, look, uh, if you want to be my disciple, then you're going to deny yourself. Surrender. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Surrender is where we encounter the magnitude of God's ultimate love and provision over us. Surrendering is where we contain the fullness of his blessing and of his promises. Surrendering is where we deepen our commitment to him and to his perfect timing above everything else. And so God is our ultimate provider. As we recognize that, we respond in faithful confidence to him and we respond in faithful surrender because surrender builds character and surrender gives him glory. Friends, listen, this is a message that all of us, every one of us need to walk away with today. Like we need to hear this truth because there's no doubt that God is testing our faith in many ways. But as we recognize his provision and as we respond in faithful confidence and surrender, this is how God builds his kingdom on earth. We see it through Abraham that, as, uh, that through Abraham's test of faith, God blessed the nations. So much so that you and I, we can claim that same blessing. I love how uh, uh, Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 puts it this way. And now that you belong to Christ, and he's speaking to us as believers, now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you just as God promised Abraham that he would be a blessing to the nations and that nations and people and generations to come would encounter and experience the love and the grace, the goodness, the blessing of God. Here we are. And it's through his obedience. It's through his confidence. It's through his faith in God. Um, and so through Abraham's test, God blessed the nations. Through our test, through our test of faith, God brings hope. And God brings the light of Jesus to a world that is, and you know it, a world that is broken, to a world that needs a Savior. He tests our faith to build His kingdom, to bring people to a place of hope and peace and reconciliation and unity. And justice and righteousness and so the question is or the challenge for us is how is God testing you I want you to pray and I want you to consider how is God testing you uh, maybe the better question is like what is your Isaac what is that thing that you're holding on to that is just so valuable that is just so precious that God is calling you to lay at the altar
Is it your time? Is it that relationship? Is it that uh, desire? Is it that plan? Is it that hope? Is it, uh, you know, tithe? Is it uh, the routine that you have? What is it? Uh, My prayer is that you would be open to hearing from God and my prayer also is that you would be open to His correction. That He would show you, uh, you know, those things that are deep in your heart that you're holding on to and that He would reveal uh, ways to walk away and to lay them at His altar. What's keeping you from stepping out in faith today? We're going to be talking all about that in our D groups um, this week and I invite you to be a part of that. So listen, my prayer is that God would reveal these places and these spaces in our life and through our faithful confidence and our faithful surrender, we would truly encounter His love, His blessing, His joy, His peace, ultimately the provision of God so that you and I may continue to build His kingdom and to be the light in the darkness around us. Let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for your word. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. Uh, I I thank you, Lord, for just this, this incredible story that we see in Genesis 22. And for the truth that we pull from it, that you are our ultimate provider, that we can trust you and that you, you put these tests of faith in our life to build our character so that we may encounter your goodness, that we, we may encounter your provision to contain the blessing that you have for us. And so my prayer, Lord, is as we all walk through these tests, that you would meet us, that you would lead us, guide us, equip us through your spirit, and that we would continue to respond to you in faithful confidence and surrender. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray, and everybody said with me this morning, amen, amen. Now, I picked this last song specifically so that we would respond. Um, So let's worship together in response. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
church for worshiping with us today and I just want to invite you to listen to Pastor Leland as we close today and the benediction that he has for you. Thank you so much for joining us today and to close today's service I wanted to leave you with a blessing from 2 Peter 3.18. Brothers and sisters, may you grow in the grace and knowledge of of our Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. And to him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen.